Happy Halloween! Today, I'm making skulls. Some assembly required. So I thought that since this video is coming out on Halloween, I would do one more spooky thing and make some skulls. But you already made skulls! I mean, sure, but this time I thought I would make skulls without the bear. Skulls with no bear? Yeah. Um, you know, just for something different. No bear, you monster. Anyway, as I was saying, I thought that I would needle felt some skulls. Three different kinds. One, just a plain skull, and then two sugar skulls which I thought was especially appropriate because the kids are all learning about Dia de los Muertos in their Spanish class. So I thought, why not? Let's try some sugar skulls. So for the sugar skulls, I will felt the decorations onto one and I will embroider the decorations onto the other just to see. It'll be an experiment. Let's see how they all turn out. So the first thing that I'm going to do is build the base for all of my skulls. I'm gonna make them all about the same size. One of them ends up being a tiny little bit bigger than the others, but approximately the same size. I'm a little bit exaggerating the proportions because I want them to end up cuter rather than super realistic because I don't know, it's just not the look that I'm going for. So here are all three. For my plain skull, I am just going to use the roving and the pencil roving to make all the different details, like the holes for the eyes and the nose, and I'm going to go over the teeth a little bit so that they kind of stand out. Not a lot of detail that I need in this one with the black, so I'm going to try to just keep it a little bit simple. Now this one is going to be my all felted sugar skull. So I am first going to do all the black for the eyes and the nose and the mouth. Unlike the last one that I did, I am going to make a big black mouth and then I will go in and add teeth later. Then after I've done all of the black, I'm going to add some bright colors and just make some decorations. I'm probably missing a lot of symbolism here, but and doing my best. <laughs> I'm trying to make them appealing to me. I'm the customer. Now finally we are on the second sugar skull. This one is the one that I think is going to be a little bit trickier because I don't usually embroider on uh, three-dimensional objects. I really only ever embroider on my flat felted scenes. So this is going to be new for me but it's the same basic idea. So I'm going to use a kind of similar color scheme just with the embroidery floss that I have on hand. And again, I'm going to make some decorations that I feel like are kind of appealing to me because that's what I do. <laughs> I make what I like sometimes. I try to make what I like, not always successful. So here are all my little scully friends. I like the simplicity of this one. I went back and I made his eyes a little bit bigger. I think 
that I like it better like this. Not much bigger. I don't want to be like completely ridiculous looking, but I thought a little bit of a bigger eye cavity would make him cuter. I don't know. Can skulls be cute? Let me know in the comments. I don't know. Uh, I guess it's in the eye of the beholder. So, between the two sugar skulls... I mean, this one is definitely bolder. This one, eh, it's a different, a different look. It's, it's interesting how I kind of use the same basic design. I mean, I made them a little bit different because I don't like to do the same thing over and over again. <laughs> you may have noticed this. But I think they're cool. I think that they turned out pretty neat. I think that the felted one is a little bit more bold, which I like the details in the embroidered one you can really only see super close up hello it's me why do i have a giant hand behind my head i don't know but this i think is my favorite this was fun too i think it's fun to experiment with different ways of doing things and then maybe they turn out good maybe not so good so there we go i'm glad that i tried that that was interesting i learned some things it's definitely possible to embroider on a three-dimensional thing. Definitely not as easy as on something flat and extra not as easy as something that's actually meant to be embroidered on, like a fabric. It has a very different feel when you're embroidering on something that moves and squishes and stuff. But with enough practice, I'm sure that you can make it work for you. So I'm glad that I tried this. Very, very interesting. I am going to try to think of how I can incorporate more embroidery into my three-dimensional felted things. If you can think of anything, let me know, because right now I get nothing. Eyelashes. So thank you for watching. This was fun. I always like a good experiment. And if you like this video, feel free to give it a thumbs up. If you like this kind of video, I do a lot of needle felting here. You should probably subscribe so that you can come back later. Click the notification bell so that you know as soon as I put out a new video. They come out on Tuesdays and Saturdays and they are all varied. Often there's felting, but often there are other things as well. So if you like a little variety in your video, I'm your girl. Happy Halloween. Have a great weekend. Until the next video, I will be thinking of maybe some fall things to do. So be awesome, and I will see you on the next video. Bye! Bye!